The Pulse School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BASF. Brittany Warner here with realagriculture.com. Welcome back to another episode of our Pulse School. Today we're joined by Dr. Michelle Hubbard. She is a research scientist in pulse pathology with Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada. How's it going today, Michelle? Pretty good. I'm excited to be out in the field and doing an in-person live event today. I know. It's nice to have all of these things back, hey? It certainly is. Absolutely. Well, today we are talking about chickpea disease management. First and foremost, what is kind of the most prevalent disease that uh, producers want to look for and what are you talking about here today? So the most important disease for chickpea is Ascochyta blight and it's caused by a fungus, Ascochyta rabii. And this disease, your management, as with most diseases, starts before you even seed a crop with planning. So plan for good crop rotations. That means planting chickpea in a field that hasn't had chickpea for at least three or four years and avoiding f having a field nearby with chickpea stubble that could be infected. Okay. And then there's no complete genetic resistance, but there are some cultivars that are more resistant than others. So picking a variety with some resistance to Ascochyta is a good start. Um, another possible management practice is intercropping, growing flax and chickpea together in the same field, okay. either in the same row or in alternating rows. Then, um, regardless of using all of these good practices, you want to scout your fields early in the season. And that's important because Chickpea ascochyta blight is largely managed by fungicides, and fungicides are not curative. So if you already have the disease and you've already your plants are severely damaged, the fungicide's not going to do you so much good. You want to get out there early. I was going to say early detection is kind of key. So at what point uh, do farmers need to get out and be scouting for this and kind of take us through the staging and, and what they should be looking for? Sure. So you want to start early when the plants are still vegetative, as early as seven to eight nodes. And typically there won't be disease at that point, but if there is, what you're looking for is small black dots on the stems and the leaves. And these dots can be easily mistaken for dirt. So a way to do it is, you, first of all, you have to really get out close with the plants. You can't just walk through the field or drive by. And then if you see black dots, give them a little rub and see if they come off. If they do, chances are it's dirt. If not, it's likely disease. And then you should plan to apply, apply a fungicide relatively soon. Right. And another important component to disease development is the environment. So if there's rain in the forecast or it's recently rained or there's high humidity, that greatly increases your risk. Whereas if it's hot and dry, you'll probably don't need to apply a fungicide. And, and cooler conditions as well. So wet and cool conditions are kind of that prime breeding ground for this disease to kind of, you know, have legs. Exactly. Okay, and after that um, six to seven node stage, and if you don't see any of those black dots when you're kind of pulling up the plant there, when should you be going back uh, to, to scout again? Does it need further scouting? What does that process look like? It absolutely needs further scouting. You do not assume you're good if there's nothing at seven or eight nodes. You need to keep coming back. Typically, I'd say seven to ten days, but that could be more frequent if there was rain. So if it had been dry, but then you got a rain, disease could show up in as little as three, four, five days. Um, so you need to keep scouting. And even if it's dry, you should scout again every 10 days or so. And plants do become more vulnerable to ascochyta blight as they end the vegetative stage. So flowering and later, mm -hmm. the, the resistance that is present starts to break down and the risk of disease showing up increases. Are producers looking for different symptoms outside of those little black specks after the six to seven node stage? What are things they can look for as they continue to scout throughout the growing season? Well, at any stage, the disease, no matter the plant developmental stage, the first symptoms of the disease are little black dots. Then those black dots will progress to slightly larger black dots and then brownish dots. And then and you really, regardless of plant age, you want to start your fungicide program when, the, when it's at that stage, if possible. 
The later stages of the disease are larger leaf lesions and they can look like concentric circles, so circles within circles, and small black dots where the spores are produced can but aren't always found in these lesions. And then another serious symptom is stem lesions. And those are serious because they can wrap completely around the stem or girdle the plant. And that is, has happened on this plant here. And that's a big problem because it can cut off the nutrient supply and the water supply to any part of the plant that's above that lesion. And as the lesion progresses, the stem can actually break and portions of the plant can fall off and die. Okay. And do we know, is there any advancements happening in the way of chickpea development for varieties to become more resistant against this disease? Do we know where that's at at this point? Absolutely. There's breeding work ongoing at the University of Saskatchewan. Dr. Bunyman Turan is the chickpea breeder there, and his team is continuing to work hard to develop resistance. But it's very challenging because there's only so much resistance out there and it's never complete resistance. It's what we call quantitative resistance. So it doesn't completely eliminate the disease. It just creates a little bit larger of a buffer for you to, to manage and to try to mitigate the spread of it. Would that be fair? And it can reduce the need for fungicides. Right. So you might be able to get away with one or two fungicides as opposed to four or five. Right. If you start early and if you grow a resistant variety and if you try something like intercropping, and another important thing is to plant clean seed, of course. So ideally, 0% ascochyta and absolutely not more than 0.3% infection in the seed. Okay, great. Thanks so much for joining us today, Dr. Michelle. Yep, thank you.